Hello, welcome to Here Comes the Bride, a journey through the book of Acts, the church begins. Hi, I'm Jim DeVore. I'm the pastor of Cornerstone Church of Little Rock in Southern California. So glad to be with you for devotional number 52. We are in Acts chapter 21, devotional number 52. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and go to Acts chapter 21, and we will um, read from verse 1. And when he had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patera, and having found a ship across to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. We, when we had come inside of Cyprus and leave it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload its cargo. Okay, let me... Let me just wrap up this journey with a look for you at um, some of these places so you have an idea. This is the end of the third missionary journey. And so um, we want to be able to uh, get to it. What happened to, I'll hold that thought. Here is the one we are looking for. Let's get that going. Hello there, okay. All righty. So the circles represent where Paul was on the far left. He got as far as Corinth. And then the big circle is kind of where he, um, remember he was actually in Miletus when he said goodbye to the people in the church of Ephesus. That's called chapter 20. So now he is right here and he's going to basically, if you watch, he's just going to, as he names all these places, that's where he's going. So um, they, they went on course to Kos and then from Kos, there's Kos there, right there. They went down to, uh, the Rhodes and then to Patera. So they're just kind of bouncing around to these areas. There's Rhodes, there's Patera. They're going from seaport to seaport. By the time you get to Patera, then he's going to do this straight cross, okay? They found a ship um, crossing to Phoenicia. Okay, Phoenicia's down here, this area. So they took that ship and they set sail. And when they had arrived, okay, and I love how he says, um, when we had come inside of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, so here's Cyprus. So they came, they were inside of it, but they didn't stay there. It was on their left. Okay, so they're coming this way. And uh, then it says they arrived and landed at Tyre, at Tyre, okay? And so they land, landed at Tyre where the ship was to unload. Okay, so now you just want to notice a couple other places. Okay, here's Tyre. Here's Jerusalem, okay? So just be aware of those. And up here is Antioch, okay? All righty, good deal. All right, so let's keep those in mind. And um, okay, so now that you kind of got that in your mind, let's go ahead and just get back to the actual text here. So we're in verse four now of 21. Having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. Now, it's kind of interesting. Um, so because Paul, the spirit's been telling Paul to go to Jerusalem. And yet scripture here says through the spirit, they're telling him not. Don't be confused with that sometime of the spirit can't make up his mind. They're, they're it's saying they are generally imploring him, seeking God, asking the Holy Spirit, trying to keep Paul from going to Jerusalem because they're afraid he's going to be arrested, okay? When our seven days, verse five, were ended, we departed and went on our journey, and they all with wives and children accompanying us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the bench, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Potomius and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. So Paul's, Luke actually, we got we here. Luke is actually working his way as we're getting closer and closer to Jerusalem. We had, um, so now there's going to be a little story here about Philip the Evangelist. So Philip the Evangelist was one of the seven. He's one of the seven from all the way back in Acts chapter six, the seven who were made deacons to help oversee the distributing of food to the widows, okay? All righty, so he's an evangelist. Not only did he end up serving in that way, but he served the Lord by sharing the gospel with people, okay? He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Again, Judea is actually south of them, but the, the down idea is anything that leaves Jerusalem, Israel, you're coming down to your next place, okay? While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem 
will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Again, Paul's been expecting this, so it's almost confirmed now by this prophet that you're going to be bound hand and foot by the Jews once you arrive in Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you doing? Um, oh, let me back up here, verse 12. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For am I ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus? And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. Let's just pause there for a moment and just kind of take in that statement, okay? They're all crying. They don't want to see Paul hurt or injured or even killed, imprisoned, whatever. They're crying for him, afraid for him of what he's facing. Paul's comment is, Why, what are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? Your tears are causing me great pain. For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul said, look, you're breaking my heart, but I am ready. I am ready to face whatever the Lord would have for me. So if I get imprisoned, I get imprisoned. If I get, if I get killed, I get killed. But here's the key. It's not imprisonment for imprisonment's sake, and it's not death for death's sake. What is the purpose of it? The purpose of it is what? Let's look here. For the name of the Lord Jesus. So Paul's not going to go down and stir up trouble just so he gets arrested and killed. He's not trying to just get himself killed so he gets himself killed. Okay? He's not trying to make himself a martyr because it would be really cool to be a martyr for Jesus. He's saying, I will do whatever I can do in order to bring honor to the name of the Lord Jesus. So if that means I'm going to be imprisoned, then I'll be imprisoned. That means I'm going to be killed, then I will be killed. We learned so much here, okay? It's not about making um, an impact for the sake of making impact. It's about honoring the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, Paul has left cities to honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's run from persecution to honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in all those times, he sensed that God was calling him to Jerusalem probably for the sake of his own death and his own prison. But he knows that process is part of the process of honoring the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you look at verse 15. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Manasin of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. So they're going to resolutely go forward and do what God wants them to do. Verse 14 is kind of the reminder of that, okay? Once Paul says, I'm ready to do what God's called me to do, then they have to get in line too, not because of Paul, but because of the Lord. And since he would not be persuaded, they ceased and said, let us, let the will of the Lord be done. So much to learn from there. So much to learn. Remember when we study the book of Acts, we ask three questions. What do we learn about the eternal plan of God? Question one. Question two, what do we learn about the eternal plan of God as he's working through the church? And what do we learn about the eternal plan of God and individuals? And this question is an answer for all three of us. Okay? Verse 14. What do you learn about the eternal plan of God? Is that the plan of God will be accomplished. And so it is our job to fall in line with the plan of God and not to fight against it. Even if it means pain and agony, even for ourselves or for our loved ones. Okay? All right? What does it mean for the church? It means that the church needs to be willing to give up its leaders when its leaders are following the will of the Lord, okay? Whether that's the death or the persecution or something else, and not get in the way of that. But we don't want to lose our leader. He's such a good guy. He's so great to us. If that leader is convinced that he's following the will of the Lord, then get out of his way and let him move on and lead. In your life, you should be asking this question. Don't move from where you're at for any reason except for the will of the Lord. Okay, don't go because the job is better, the housing is cheaper, the landscape is prettier, you're closer to family. Those are all great reasons. Go because it's the will of the Lord. And if you are going, then one of the ways you're going to know it's the will of the Lord is by checking out the churches and places that you're going to and asking yourself, will I grow closer to the Lord? Will I be, grow more spiritually, even if it's going to be rougher and more difficult? Is this an opportunity for me to know that I'm sincerely following the will of the Lord. If you're convinced of that, and maybe it is the will of the Lord for you to, to go and be a blessing to your family and be near them. It is the will of the Lord for you to go and serve your job. And ultimately, no matter where you go, 
you need to continue to seek the will of the Lord. And if you're staying, you need to know that you're staying for the will of the Lord. Paul, back and forth, back and forth through the first missionary journey, second missionary journey, third missionary journey, followed the will of the Lord. Sometimes that meant stay and get persecuted, uh, return and get persecuted, or leave and get out of there so you don't keep getting persecuted. The key is, let the will of the Lord be done and let us follow it as we go. Okay, that is Acts chapter 21 all the way down to verse 16. We will pick up verse 17 next time when we return to, here comes the bride, let the church begin.